Hello everyone and welcome to our session today on Business Central Apps for Distribution and Manufacturing. Joining us today is Mark Hamblin from InsightWorks. And before I pass it over to Mark, I would like to remind you that this session is being recorded and it will be posted to our on-demand webinar library later this week for you to review and share with anyone. And if you do have any questions, we just ask that you do type them into the questions box and we will get them called out at the end of our presentation. So now I'll turn it over to Mark to kick off our session. Hey, good morning, everybody. Glad everybody could join us this morning um, for um, going through what we can do with, uh, with Business Central uh, when we're talking about uh, distribution and manufacturing capabilities. So, what we'll do is we're going to run through a quick PowerPoint here, just very brief, and then we're going to jump in and, and look at some of the, you know, key products uh, that are available for the Business Central Cloud version, um, you know, to to extend your your capabilities if you're a distributor or manufacturer, or really have any sort of inventory management requirements. <coughs> so a little bit about us, um, you know, Insight Works. We partner with Inovia uh, to to deliver these uh, solutions. Uh, we're based in Canada, but we do have offices in the United States, uh, in Amsterdam, and, and some other offices in Canada is, uh, here as well. And we work really throughout the world. So if you have branch offices overseas or something like that, we can definitely manage that. Now, um, what we do from a, uh, a products perspective, we basically take Business Central, or if you're still with the on-premises uh, NAV or on-premises Business Central, what we do is we take that and we basically fill all the gaps within that product. So it's a very good starting point <clears throat> as far as, um, you know, the, the inventory management and the financials and everything else, but there are some gaps here and there. So what we do is we, we build these apps that plug in and fill those holes. So things like, you know, um, warehouse management and manufacturing and, you know, all sorts of different things in there. So the, the basic apps that we provide, now there's more than this, but these are sort of the you know the the big guys. Um, there's a few on here that aren't listed, but you'll be able to find them on uh, App Source, which if you're not familiar with it, that's the Business Central sort of you know app store for the cloud. Um, but the one we're once we're going to cover off today, I'll uh, I'll touch on briefly and talk about these others as well. So we'll we'll be going through Warehouse Insight today. That's you know sort of mobile WMS. If you need to do any sort of inventory management with a barcode scanner, that's what you would use. Um, and that doesn't have to be a full warehouse. That could, you know, you're a manufacturer and, you know, you have a parts room and you want to pick from it. Well, that would be a good solution for it. Or if you're a full-blown uh, distributor with 100 people picking a day, that's fine. That same tool will fulfill those needs. Um, Dynamic Ship is another one that we're going to cover off today. So if you have any shipping requirements, such as, you know, really carrier integration, if you ship UPS, FedEx, DHL, any of those guys, or LTL shipping, those types of things, then this tool will help integrate with those carriers, get your rates, get your labels, all of those sorts of things to allow you to more efficiently ship your product. Um, advanced inventory count we'll cover today as well. Anybody that's got a lot of inventory really needs this tool. So Base Business Central is, is pretty good from uh, an inventory management perspective, but the inventory count capabilities are a little bit lacking. You know, if you've got very basic count requirements, it, it'll be fine, but if you're doing lot numbers or serial numbers, or if you have a lot of stock in different places, those types of things, that advanced inventory count is really a must have. So those are really, you know, the three major things we're covering off today, but I'll briefly mention some of these other ones. So Shop Floor Insight, um, I may cover a little bit of this, uh, you know, given the uh, time, but this uh, allows you to do labor collection, um, consumption, output, uh, quality capture, all of those sorts of things on the shop floor through a shop floor terminal, right? So uh, if you're a manufacturer that, again, doing manual time cards or have other sort of, um, you know, older system or something like that for time collection, that's that's the guy to look at. Counter sales, we see this a lot with distribution and manufacturing. If you're a manufacturer and you have a parts counter, people come up and, and uh, you know, want to buy something from you, this is the guy to use. It's built into Business Central. It's a basic POS uh, type solution, but allows you to do things that you can't do in standard uh, business central, like scanning UPC codes or, you know, tracking a lot of the information that you would need for point of sale. Product configurator, again, manufacturing, we see this a lot. Uh, even in distribution, if you're if you're building up kits on the fly, 
this allows you to you know make some choices against various options and it'll build up that kit for you or the manufacturing bomb and routing for you so you can build the products without having to you know manually you know mix and match all the, the different options those sorts of things um we'll cover nav extender here that's that's upcoming uh, MX APS, if you're a manufacturer and you've got really fairly advanced uh, scheduling requirements, uh, this is the tool for you as well. So it'll generate the schedule for manufacturing automatically that you can then review and, and update within uh, the shop floor inside if you want. Okay, so that's the basic product line. Um, and again, we're going to cover a few of those today. Now, one of the ones we're covering, I'll just go over it briefly is the Warehouse Insight product. So this is available on AppSource, you know, there's a free trial, but if you use the free trial on AppSource, you know, you need to get a hold of us so that we can help walk you through getting it set up. We don't want you going in there blind and, uh, you know, getting confused or, or anything like that. But what this allows you to do is any configuration that you have within your business central environment, whether it's the, you know, the basic demo stuff that doesn't even have bins turned on all the way up to the advanced warehousing, you can use these handheld scanners to do receiving, shipping, all of those sorts of things. This next page here kind of gives you an overview of all the different applications that it comes with out of the box. And um, this application builder guy here is kind of nice. Now, um, what that allows us to do is it allows us to extend the application. So if you have custom requirements or anything like that, we can build a new application for the handheld very easily, import that right into your business central environment, and away you go. So it's very extensible. We can make it do essentially anything you want, even if all these out of the box ones don't fully cover your needs. But everything that you see here uh, is pretty much, will cover anything that Business Central can do and more. So, you know, we've got license plating, we've got advanced inventory count, things like that. The Business Central just doesn't offer out of the box. Um, Dynamic ship is the next one. So again, what this allows you to do is integrate with your carriers. That's one of the key points and real-time integration. So what that means is on a sales order or sales quote, I can go out and do rate shopping. I can figure out you know, which carriers have the best rates, the best delivery times, that sort of thing. I'll get those rates. It can add it to the quote to the order automatically. When I'm shipping, it'll automatically generate the label from the carrier. Uh, I can manage how I package the boxes, all of those sorts of things. And from an LTL's perspective, I can build up pallets. Uh, I can generate, you know, my bill of lading, my pallet labels, all of that sort of thing can be done out of this. And the nice thing about this dynamic ship is it's very integrated with that Warehouse Insight product, which means a lot of what I can do in, in the dynamic ship interface, I can also do from a handheld device. So if I want to build up pallets while I'm shipping uh, or while I'm picking, I can do that. When I get to shipping, they're ready to go and I, I print my labels and off I go. Or if I'm picking smaller boxes, I can build up the boxes while I'm picking. So um, Dynamic Ship and Warehouse Insight are very closely related and, and tied together. Uh, you don't need one or the other to use the other one. I can use Warehouse Insight without Dynamic Ship, and I can use Dynamic Ship without Warehouse Insight. And really, I, I'm not going to go through this one. I'm, I might cover a little bit on there, but I'm going to stop there and jump directly into the demo at, at this point. I've, I've talked about Shop Floor Insight, what it can do uh, in the intro. But at that point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in and I'm going to start talking about, um, you know, the, the handheld scanners. So first of all, uh, let's talk about the hardware a little bit. Now, what I've got in my hand is this exact device. So you're just seeing a screen share from my device on the screen here. And I'll be scanning barcodes and things like that on, on my device, and you'll see it update on, on your screen. Now, this happens to be a Windows device. Um, the current version on AppSource for Business Central supports Windows devices. We do have an Android version as well. That should be up on AppSource you know, in a few months, but we'll support both Android and Windows devices. We can run on tablets um, or forklift mount computers or pretty much any device uh, that you like. But, and we also support any maker model, so it doesn't have to be one of these data logic devices. If you have older Windows devices running around, you can go ahead and install it on that. If you need to buy new devices, we can help you select and we can supply the devices as well. Now, um, all of them run on Wi-Fi. So this is a real-time so solution. So as I'm scanning, everything is going real-time back into Business Central, uh, verifying the business logic in Business Central, sending back any errors or confirmations from there. So it's all real-time over Wi-Fi. Now, we do have an offline mode, that scratch pad thing there. 
it allows you to, you know, if there's a network failure or power failure or something like that, you can still capture all the information electronically offline. And then when you're back online, you can just upload it and, um, you know, process those scans from within Business Central. But otherwise, we're, we're a real-time solution. Uh, so when somebody's out in the back of the warehouse and they scan, they're getting real-time feedback. They don't have to wait 10 minutes until the system syncs again to, to give you the feedback that they did something wrong. All right, now I'll talk briefly about the apps that are loaded on this particular uh, device, and then we'll jump in and, and actually see what they look like. So we've got an inquiry mode here. That allows me to scan a barcode and it'll give me additional information about it. Now that barcode can be a UPC code, it could be your uh, barcode, it could be a vendor's barcode, it could be a serial number, a lot number, a bin code, any of those sorts of things that we can read it. Now, um, when it comes to uh, you know vendor barcodes or your own custom barcodes, we can read pretty much anything you like out of a barcode label. And we can generate uh, what we call data matrix barcodes, the, the square barcode, sort of like a QR code if you're familiar with those. And what that allows us to do is put a lot of information into a barcode. So you can have an item number, a lot number, an expiration date, and a quantity and a unit of measure even if you want in a single barcode. I scan that, I've got all the information I need. If you've just got a UPC code and a separate barcode for a serial number or something like that, we can handle that as well. All right, so it doesn't matter what kind of barcode you have or what format you have, we can scan it in and, and process it. This inquiry app is also used as a drill down from these other applications. So if I need more information about, let's say, a sales order that I'm working on, I can actually drill down and get more detail about that from that sales order. Um, and I, I mentioned scanning bin codes. Again, if you don't have bins turned on, you don't need to turn them on to use the solution. Um, you know, I can scan a shelf number and things like that uh, in the various uh, applications as well. Uh, the inventory count. So we support, of course, cycle counting and full physical counts, both with the standard built-in business central uh, capabilities, which is the physical inventory journal, or with the advanced count. And the advanced count is, you know, um, far superior than the, the standard count, but um, it is an optional module as well. And I'll go through a little bit of that as we as we go through. I talked about scratch pad license plating. That's again palletizing or boxing of product. So if I've got uh, you know three different items I want to put in a box or ten different items with different serial numbers or lot numbers that I want to put in a pallet, I would use license plating to do that. And I can generate that license plate when I'm receiving, when I'm picking, when I'm shipping. I can just do it randomly in the warehouse, I can build up a pallet of product, and then I can use that everywhere in the system. So again, a typical use is um, receiving, I get a single barcode I can use to put the product away, or shipping where I'm building up pallets or boxes to ship, but I can also use it with production. So if I want to pre-stage all my components or raw material for production, I can stage them as a license plate. I've got one barcode to scan to actually use those on the, the production order. So, with production, uh, segueing into that, we can do consumption output from the handheld device. We can su support assembly orders, production orders. So we've got the, uh, you know, sort of the full gamut of, of production management from a material perspective on this device. From a labor quality, you know, work instructions uh, type perspective, we have that shop floor inside I mentioned earlier, and that's what we would typically use for that <coughs> more advanced um, manufacturing requirement. Uh, receiving and put away. So within Business Central, there's actually a number of different ways you can set up your warehouse. I've, I've mentioned bins a few times, but there's a number of other things you can do. So for example, you can turn on two-stage receiving, where I first receive into a staging area, and then I do a secondary put away to put it into the warehouse. So if that matches your physical process, you can turn that on within Business Central, and the handhelds will allow you to execute that process you know, on the shop floor. However, if you just receive off a PO, and as soon as you receive it, it's in your facility, you're not using bins or anything like that, you can use that. You don't have to turn on that two-stage receiving. Okay. Similarly with pick and ship. Uh, I've got a two-stage uh, pick and ship or pick and production uh, process turned on here, which means I pick everything to a staging area, and then I do a secondary activity to ship it or to consume it or whatever else I need to do. And the last one I've got on this screen is the movement which allows me to you know, move product from location to location or bin to bin. All right, <clears throat> now uh, with that overview, let's jump in and actually have a quick peek at what a few of these things look like. So I'm going to start with receiving 
uh, and uh, we'll see what that looks like. So I just tap the screen there. Now, normally we don't want people touching the screen. You know, if you're out in the warehouse and they're wearing gloves or the fingers like sausages, you don't want them really touching the screen very much. So that's one of the few times you actually have to touch the screen is, is when you're choosing an app. The rest of it is typically done from the, the device's keypad or the menu button and that sort of thing. Now, once I'm here uh, in receiving, I can scan an item that I've just received and it'll bring up the PO for it. Or the typical situation is I'm sitting there, I've got a, a packing slip in my hand <clears throat> that's got my, my purchase order number on it. And so I type in maybe a few digits of that as a filter and then I do look up to find the, the PO that I'm interested in. Or if I just hit the look up um, button, it gives me a list of all the POs in the system that I can receive. So find the one I'm interested in. I can use the, uh, the arrow keys to go up and down and find it or just tap the screen. And it loads that uh, PO on the screen for me to receive. Now what it's showing is everything that I'm supposed to receive on that particular uh, PO and what I've received uh, so far. So you can see this first one, we've got 88 left. I've already scanned in 12 and you know that's, that's the way it works. These columns are all configurable. So if I wanted to add additional columns in here or change the way this thing looks, I can do that directly from within Business Central. It's just configuration uh, that I go in. So you can see there's configurations and everything right here, columns and all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> now, the way it typically works is I simply, you know, if, if everything is barcoded by my vendor automatically or, or as it comes in, all I have to do is simply go in grab something off the pallet or out of the box, scan the barcode, it'll find that uh, on the list and optionally show me a picture of that item. So the screen, there's a little bit of lag here, but that's okay. So that picture can be handy if you're doing your own barcoding, right? So if you're generating your own barcodes from Business Central uh, and placing them on the packages, and I scan a barcode and there it showed me a cable, if I'm holding a pair of speakers in my hand or something, I know I've got an issue with the barcode or the data. Now, what I did was it came in and it, it showed me that picture, which you can turn on or off. I enter the quantity I receive, and it just says, okay, he's ready to receive five, and there's 95 left. And then later on, maybe I find more of those guys. I can scan other barcodes, everything else, but I find some more. I scan it again. Again, optionally see the, the picture, and I enter the quantity I found this time. And what it does is it just keeps incrementing my quantity to receive and decrementing my outstanding quantity. And what that means is you don't have to unpack everything, put each item into its own little pile and count them up and enter the quantity once. I can just enter the quantities as I'm pulling them out of the box. So if you're doing container receiving or larger uh, you know, pallet type receipts, that can actually save a fair amount of time in, in a lot of situations. You'll also notice that I didn't have to tell the system that, hey, I'm gonna scan an item or choose an edit box to scan into or anything like that. I just scan a barcode, knows what I'm trying to do and reacts accordingly. And that's throughout the system. You never have to tell the system what you're about to do. You scan barcodes and based on the context, it knows what you're doing. Now, that was the first scenario where, um, you know, there's already a barcode on it. I just scan and I bring it in. The, the next scenario is we don't have a barcode on that product. So what I can do is I can go into Business Central and, uh, you know, it's timed out here, but there's, um, you'll see when it loads back up, there's a number of uh, label reports available in, in, the, uh, in the system. So I can come in here and I can generate all my barcodes from within Business Central. You can create your own label reports and everything else uh, within here and um, print them out for that PO, affix the, the labels onto the product and then scan it in the way I just did with the vendor barcode. And the last scenario is, you know, we come in here, the product doesn't have a barcode on it, and I'm never going to put a barcode on it because it's, you know, steel plate or it's, you know, a you know, big bag or something like that, or it's small parts. And, and the barcode for the item might be at, actually at the bin where I place it. So in a case like that, on an item by item and application by application basis, we can actually allow you to manually enter the quantities. So let's say the second one here, um, I don't want to have to scan that to, to enter the quantity. So I can say for this item or this item type, in receiving, I don't actually have to scan a quantity. All I have to do is go in there and enter a quantity. So I tap that little button here, and I can enter the quantity that I've received of that particular item without scanning. But on picking, I could say whenever I'm picking this particular item, I do have to scan a barcode, 
to verify I'm picking the right item. And that's because the barcode for this item is actually on the rack or on the bin where this item is placed. So you have a lot of control over that. Similarly with the quantity screen there. So as I was scanning and it popped up and asked me for quantities, we, you have a lot of control based again on item category or item type and application, what unit of measure to default in, what quantity to default in, all of those sorts of things. So if you have some items that you want to force people to scan each item they're picking and they're not serialized, for that particular item or item type, you can set it up so that I have to scan 10 times to receive or to pick 10 items. So you've got a ton of control. And again, that's all just configuration within the system. There's no coding or anything like that required to make those things happen. Now, after I've done my receiving, uh, I can simply go in here, I can hit post, and that will actually post this receipt within Business Central and we're good. So I don't ever have to necessarily go back into Business Central to do any of that receiving work. Right from here, I can go ahead and post it and it creates that transaction in the system. Now, the other thing I'll mention is license plate. So as I was receiving here, I could have started a license plate and everything I'm receiving goes onto that license plate and that pallet essentially and it generates a single barcode I can then scan to move that into the warehouse. So if you're using bins, that's handy. I can move it into the warehouse or, you know, if it's being staged for a job I'm receiving or something like that, then I've got that one barcode to reference all of that product. All right, so that's, uh, that's a little bit on, on receiving there. And uh, we'll just go out of that. And now we'll talk about, um, you know, picking. <clears throat> so after receiving, by the way, if you have that two-stage receipts turned on, I would then do a, a put away operation and the put away just tells me which bins to put that product in. So it can actually direct me to the appropriate bin to store that product and I can execute that on the handheld. And what we're doing by executing on the handheld is we're verifying that we've physically done what the system is telling us to do. So if it tells me to put something away in bin A1, I scan bin A2, it knows I'm doing something wrong. Or if you've got the, the permission set up, it allows me to change that bin that uh, the Business Central is telling me to put product away in. All right. Um, and that, by the way, is one of the biggest reasons you would go with barcoding, is that inventory accuracy. Because you're, you're verifying what they're physically doing, you know your inventory is going to be close to 100% accurate. So when you send somebody out to pick something and you're sending them to pick from bin A1, you have a very high degree of... Um, uh, what's the word? You know that bin A1 is going to have that product confidence. That's the word I was looking for. You have a very high degree of confidence that bin A1 actually has the product in it physically that Business Central thinks is supposed to be in that product. So that's a big advantage of the barcoding. A little bit of an aside, but I like to ramble sometimes. Anyway, <clears throat> let's talk about picking. Um, so now there's a few different ways you can pick. You can pick directly to a sales order. You can use something in the system called an inventory pick or you can use something called a warehouse pick. And that's all just configuration within Business Central. And depending on which one you choose, it'll pick a little differently. Um, but the user interface looks basically the same. Now I've got it set up to, to be uh, this two-stage picking where I first pick everything and drop it off to, uh, for shipping. But again, I could pick directly to a sales order or transfer order. Now the typical way it works is, you know, you'll print out a pick ticket on the, on the printer in the warehouse. Somebody sees a piece of paper on the printer, they know they have work to do. They pick it up, they scan the barcode, and they go off and they do their work. Um, now, uh, the other way is you can go more paperless. So let's say your shipper is actually the person doing the picking. Well, maybe you don't need that piece of paper. So in a case like that, I can just hit the little lookup button. And what it'll do is it'll bring up all the picks in the system that, um, that are either unassigned or assigned to me. In this case, I've got it turned off, so it just shows me all picks. And I can choose any pick that's assigned to me if it's been pre-assigned, uh, or I can choose uh, one that's unassigned and it'll automatically assign it to me at that point so people know it's in progress and being worked on. So I'm just gonna down arrow there and choose pick number 11. That one was assigned to me. And what it does, is it opens up that entire pick on the screen at one time. Now we have a couple of different ways to look at this, uh, these picks on the screen. So um, one of them is, um, what you see there, which is the grid view. And the grid view allows us to, uh, you know, see the entire pick in one place, you know exactly what's uh, going on in that, uh, that particular pick. You, you can scroll through with your thumb and see everything you're supposed to pick and all that kind of stuff. My, uh, sorry, my screen sharing dealie just died. 
for some reason. Let's get it there. It's back. All right. So um, let's go back into pick number 11. The other uh, mode of operation we have is what we call the uh, card view. And the card view is kind of like the old style picking interface where it shows you one line at a time. So it shows me one pick line. Once I've executed that, it shows me the next pick line. So the whole screen is taken up with a, with a single line. And that can be useful in some cases. But I like this one because, again, it gives me a lot more flexibility over how I do things. So in this particular case, I have bins turned on. So the system is telling me exactly where to go in the warehouse to pick this particular product. And it's telling me to start here and you know, go through and end at the, the far end of the warehouse. But you know what? While I when I loaded this, I was actually standing over here at you know this row four, bin 0412. That's where I want to pick from. So all I do is I walk up to that that shelf for that bin, scan the bin code. Again, don't have to tell it what I'm doing. I just scan a barcode. It realizes that <clears throat> I want to pick out a bin 0412, so it highlights it for me. And then I simply pick the product or scan the product I'm picking out of that particular bin. Of course. This is going to yell at me now. And I picked four of those out of that particular bin. So it's going to yell at me because I tried to pick more than I'm, I'm allowed to out of that particular bin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan uh, this guy here. And that's actually a good thing, seeing that error message. So it does tell the employees exactly what the, the problem was and, and often what they need to do to correct it. So in this case, I tried to overpick. Uh, we do have the ability to overpick if that's part of your uh, process where you know production needs uh, you know a few cases or something, but you're going to move the entire pallet over to production. They're going to take their cases and later on you'll move the pallet back. We can handle those types of situations as well. In this case, that particular item, it didn't allow me to overpick. At any rate, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to pick 10. And again, that screen, that quantity screen you just saw, you can really configure that to show different information if you like default the quantity into the remaining quantity on the pick line or whatever you want to do. So in this particular case, I went ahead and I picked uh, 10. And you can see I've got four left over. So I couldn't find those four. I've got a problem now. You know, I went to that bin. It was supposed to have enough to pick from. It didn't. So what do I do? Well, the first thing I can do is I can go in here, hit Add Note. And these menus, I didn't mention in receiving, but these menus are all configurable as well. You can change the menus to match whatever you want to do. And I've got one on here called Add Note. And I can hit that and type in a little note and assign it to somebody in, um, in the office. And they'll get a notification of Business Central. Um, and you can have as many of those as, as you like. So you can set up one called Add Note um, or Item Not Here or whatever menu items you like and assign them to hotkeys. So I just hit you know F9 and it sends a note off to somebody in the office. So I never actually have to look at the menu. But that allows me to communicate back into the office and let them know that I have an issue with this particular uh, product or pick or whatever it is. So that's step one. I let somebody know that there's a problem. Step two, I actually want to go in and find out where else I can pick this particular product because I want to fulfill this pick. So my keypad, I can hit F8, which is what I'll do. Um, but I can also tap the screen here and you can see the various options that we have. So item inquiry is the option I'm actually going to use. Uh, on there. Now, again, most people don't have to tap the screen or don't ever tap the screen. But if you have people that prefer using the touch screen, they can. It's pretty easy. You long press and, and you get your options. But in this case, what we would typically do is you just hit a function key. So I hit F8 and it drills down. It goes to that item inquiry option and it looks up that particular item and shows me all the details about it. So I was supposed to pick out of this bin, couldn't find any, but there's a whole bunch of other bins that may have that product in it as well. I can also look at recent transactions for that item. Nobody in the warehouse, other than maybe a supervisor, typically looks at this, but it would tell me maybe there's another outstanding pick and somebody maybe may have picked the wrong unit of measure or who knows what they did, or maybe it was just received, so it's probably just still sitting and receiving or, or whatever. And the last one is the picture. So let's say I get to a, a shelf or a bin and it's completely empty. And um, I don't know what I'm looking for. You know, the description may not be enough for me to figure out what I'm actually looking for. If I have a picture of that product, maybe it's just sitting in the bin beside where it's supposed to be and I can move it over and, and keep going, right? So that gives you the ability, if you have visually distinct items, to, you know, make those sorts of decisions. So that whole drill down really does give you the ability to get more insight into what's happening in the warehouse to figure out what's going on and make those decisions on the shop floor. So I don't have to run back into the office an hour later or whatever, 
try and read what I wrote on the back of my hand and, and you know, try and fix what I've, I've done out there. I can make those decisions and correct the, the issue right on the, on the spot. Okay, so that can really improve your efficiency in the, in the warehouse. All right, so that's a little on picking now. <clears throat> um, again, with the license plates, if I was building a pallet, you know, driving down the aisle with a forklift and building up the pallet as I go, or if I'm just picking, you know, orders from a web shop or something like that, I can box or palletize those things up as I'm picking them. And so when I get to the shipping, I've already got all my packages and my pallets to find, and all the people have to do is print out the labels, and away we go. Okay, so that's the license plate. Now, if you don't use that, at this point, uh, I can post this pick. So depending on whether you're picking for sales orders or pick tickets or whatever, that'll actually register or post that transaction within the system. And in my case, it then makes all of this product available for shipping because I picked it and brought it over the shipping area. If I was picking directly against the sales order, that would actually post the shipment on the sales order, right? So depending on how you want to work, um, you know, this will behave a little bit differently. So that's basically it on, on the picking. Fairly straightforward. Again, I went through a lot of different things there, but um, you know, the typical scenario with picking is you simply walk up, you scan where you want to pick from, assuming you have bins enabled, you scan the item you're picking, and you optionally enter the quantity. So that looks like, let's say I want to pick that first one. I walk up to the bin, I scan the bin, I scan the item I pulled out of that bin, optionally shows me the picture here, and then I can just enter the quantity, and away we go. And that's how you do your picking. Okay, so very quick and simple, easy to use, bin, item, quantity. And if you don't have bins on, it's just item, quantity. And even the quantity can be defaulted in. So very easy to use for the people on the shop floor. Now, um, the last thing uh, I'll show you for now on the handhelds will be the, uh, the inventory count. So again, we have um, a standard count and a, uh, uh, an advanced count. And what I'll do is I'll just walk you through a little bit of the advanced count in here and in, in Business Central as well. So when we go into advanced count, um, what we're able to do is choose a uh, account sheet. An account sheet is, you know, if, you're, if you've used Business Central or, or NAV before, it's kind of like a batch. It's just a place where I'm going to store everything I count in the, uh, in the warehouse. So I've named them Team 1 to Team 3 here. You know, so I've got a few different teams counting, but this could be named whatever you like. If this is, you know, you want to name it raw material because that's what, you know, this particular scanner is counting and this one's finished goods or whatever you want to do. But it's really just a place, if you think of a paper-based count sheet, it's the same as that, where a paper-based count sheet, you write in what you found or the quantities you found. This is just the electronic version of it. Now, we have three different ways you can do a count. One is what we call ad hoc. And that means I can just pick up the scanner without going to Business Central at all. I can just go ahead, pick up the scanner, start scanning, review the discrepancies on the handheld device, and actually post the discrepancies from the handheld. So that's ideal in a situation like that pick that I was doing, where somebody lets me know, hey, we've got a problem with this inventory. I just grab a scanner, I do a quick cycle count of that item, and I post it. And within five minutes, my inventory is accurate again. Okay. Um, you would typically only give that to warehouse supervisors and, and those types of people. Another mode is what we call directed, and that's where the system tells you what to go out and count. So if you're used to paper-based counts, that's, those are directed counts. You get a sheet of paper that lists all the items you're supposed to go out and find and count, and we have that same uh, concept here. You go in and say, hey, give me 30 random items I'm supposed to count today for my cycle count. It'll give you that list. You go out, you find them, and you count them. Um, and that can be used for full counts or cycle counts, your, your call. And then the last one is what we call a non-directed, where the system doesn't tell me what to find. I just go out and I scan everything I find in the warehouse. And that's ideal for full physical inventory counts. Or if you're doing cycle counts by bin, it can be used for that. And um, all I do with that is I just, you know, you hand out the scanners and, you know, team one opens up their count sheet. So if I grab my count sheet here, I grab my count sheet and it starts out blank. And the reason it starts out blank is because this is the non-directed. I've been told, hey, you go count those three racks over there. And so all I do is I walk up to the first bin I find, assuming again I have bins enabled, scan the bin, scan the item that I'm counting in that particular bin. Again, option shows in the picture. You can turn that on or off. A lot of people turn that, that picture capability off in the um, uh, inventory counts. There's a little bit of screen. Oh, yeah, here it's, here's it back. And then, um, 
just because uh, you know they don't want to wait three or four seconds to look at the picture. They just want to scan and go. But that's essentially how I do it. I just scan the bin, scan the item, enter the quantity, and away we go. So I'll just do another one here. We see the picture, and then I enter the quantity. Oh, wait for your screen to catch up. And we enter the quantity that uh, that I found on that. And that's how you do your inventory count if you're doing a non-directed. Now, if it's a directed count, it's basically the same as the pick. It's just going to be give me a list of bins and a list of items to count. I can find them, count them, enter the quantities, and away I go. And then what you do is within um, Business Central, you can actually go in and do your reconciliation. So if I come into Business Central here, and I'll just do the um, quick search here. By the way, the uh, Alt-Q button is kind of nice because it um, – you know, lets you quickly do the search. Now, it's also available in the menus here. But this, this is a list of all the inventory counts I've had since the beginning of time. And it, the nice thing is it keeps track of all the statistics for those counts and everything else. And uh, so I can go back and look at my, my count performance over time, that sort of thing. But, you know, this is my, my full count for 2019. So I can come in here and open this up. And if you've used the, the standard count capability within Business Central or NAV, this is a lot different. What we get is something called an inventory count card, which allows me to manage my count a lot more comprehensively than just using a journal uh, and a batch to do it. And there's some count sheets there and everything else. But really what you would do when you get into this thing is, you know, after I've done all my, scan, uh, my, my scanning and counting, I'll come in and I'll run the count difference analysis. And what that's going to let me do is come in and, you know, set a bunch of different options if I like, It'll also reconcile by lot number and serial number, which is, is very good. So standard business central, if I have 80 lot numbers in stock and I count 60, it doesn't want to know which 60 I counted. It wants to know which 20 I didn't count, and then I have to manually enter those lot numbers. Well, this obviously saves you from having to do that. <clears throat> At any rate, when I run this, I'm just going to do all inventory, and I'm going to sort by amount. And when we hit a preview, pretty straightforward. What it's going to do is give me a overview of all my discrepancies within that particular count. So by item, the plus or minus discrepancies on all of this, and at the bottom, my, my total differences and everything else. Okay. So that gets you started, shows you where you've screwed up in the count, allows you to start making decisions about what you want to recount and those sorts of things. And when you do want to do a recount, what you're able to do is come in here and do recount sheets. And the recount sheet lets me do something like, hey, anything that's out by more than $500, or anything that's out by more than 10%, I want to automatically add that to a recount sheet. And what that does is it now generates a new sheet or adds it to this existing sheet, sorry, where I can send somebody out with a scanner and say, hey, you're doing recount one. They open up that sheet on the scanner and there's a list of 10 items or whatever they need to actually do uh, that recount. And it gives me that audit trail as well. So if you have auditors coming in, it, now, once an item is on a recount, I can't actually go in and modify that original count quantity. I have to go to the recount sheet and enter it there. So I can see my original count quantity, my recount quantity, my recounts on top of recounts, those sorts of things. And I know exactly who counted it, when they counted it, all of those types of things. So from an auditing perspective of your count, that is, is ideal. Okay, And you can do that manually as well. So anybody that's, that's dealing with auditors on, on counts, They'll come in and say, hey, I want you to go spot check these three items. Well, I can just come into the count sheet, you know, choose a line and say, you know, uh, move that particular item that they want to spot check onto a recount sheet. And when I do that, I just choose the sheet I want it to go to. And now what that does is if I come in here oops, and try and modify that, I somehow managed to do a drag and drop on, uh, on that thing. But if I try and modify that count, it is going to prevent me from doing it. As soon as I try and change that quantity, it says, hey, it's on a recount sheet. You can't do this. You need to go and, you know, uh, go to the recount sheet to actually enter this new quantity. Okay. So that's a little bit on the, on the count. Way more capable and comprehensive than the standard business central stuff. But if you don't need all of this capability, the standard count on the handhelds, will allow you to do essentially the same thing. You just don't get the same reconciliation tools and recount tools and management and all that sort of thing. <clears throat> all right. So that's uh, that's a little on the inventory count. Actually, more than a little. That was probably way too much on the inventory count. But it's extremely important, right? So the again, the biggest advantage of using these scanners is that inventory accuracy. 
you know, picking on paper is actually way faster because I can just run down the aisle and put little check marks beside everything that I've picked. But you're not accurate. You're going to have pick mistakes. You're going to have shipping mistakes. You're going to have all sorts of issues. So by using the scanners, we get to verify what they're doing. We get to keep that inventory accurate. And the inventory count is a big part of keeping your inventory accurate. So it's important to have a tool that's going to work well and work for you. All right. Let's see more babbling about the inventory count. So um, now let's talk a little bit about shipping. So when I go into um, shipping here, you know, this is where I can box product up or palletize it up or, you know, just rubber stamp everything they've picked and, and generate a label and print it out. So when you're using, um, you know, when you're building pallets and things like that, you may want to use a device like this where it's more mobile. I can scan things while I'm building the pallet or the box, that type of thing. But another typical scenario that you find in, in distribution and, and manufacturing is, you know, somebody goes out and picks product and they come and they drop it off, um, you know, at my shipping station. They dump it on the counter with a copy of the pick ticket and I'm supposed to package that up and ship it out the door. So in a case like that, or maybe you don't use, you know, the handouts for picking. Maybe the guys just run out there, grab everything on paper, drop it off. Now I need to ship that out. <clears throat> so what we do is we use dynamic ship. Big surprise, but that's what we use. So with dynamic ship, what it allows me to do is I've got this uh, package worksheet or order packaging that I can come in. Order packaging is uh, just a view that gives me a list of everything that, that's ready to be shipped. And so somebody can drop off this, you know, that particular sales order, let's say, and I can go ahead and package it up. Now, this package worksheet, this is typically what people are at the shipping station are going to be running. So when I, in here, I could have scanned a barcode on that pick ticket and it would have loaded this order as well. But from here, um, what I'm going to do is I've got a little USB uh, scanner attached to my PC, and that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be scanning barcodes to execute commands. Now, of course, I can still use all of these buttons and everything else that we have on uh, on the screen here, but by scanning commands, I can improve the efficiency of, of the people. So essentially what happens, there's a report in here that you can run. It prints a list of barcodes that are individual commands that I can scan to execute actions instead of having to use the mouse and the keyboard to do it. Now, um, I loaded this order up, you know, either from that package worksheet or by um, scanning the, the pick ticket barcode. It gives me all the details about what needs to be shipped, you know, the customer, any specific comments that I have on that order, those types of things. So I know all the details of what I need to do to package it. So now I'm going to start packing it. Now, there's a lot of ways you can set this up. The, you know, the sort of the standard way <clears throat> or the most explicit way you can do it is now I'm going to tell it which type of box I'm using. So I'm going to scan a barcode that says, hey, I'm using this, this size of box. I can adjust the, the package quantities and or sort of the, the package dimensions and weight and everything like that after the fact. But let's say you're using FedEx and you have standard FedEx box sizes or UPS box sizes or whatever. I can start out and it'll pre-fill all of this information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a box. I'm going to indicate what I'm packaging into that particular box. Then I can create another box if I want and indicate the additional products that are going to the second box or third box or fourth box or pallet. So this applies to whether it's a pallet or a box or whatever. So step one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan a command. And what it does is it creates a package for me. And that package has preset dimensions and a preset weight. Now that weight, um, you can enter manually after the fact, or we can calculate it based on, um, you know, the, the items that you're packaging. So if you have those weights on these items, we can calculate the weight of that box based on, on the weight of the items that you're packaging as well. Um, now, I've, I've generated that, that package. I now want to pack everything in. So this particular item here, it's, it's unpacked. The pack quantity is zero. We haven't packaged anything yet. So to be you know, simple, I'm going to scan a command that just packages everything that I've got on that order into that one box. At this point, though, if you want them to actually verify what was picked, I can actually scan the barcode for this particular item, and um, it'll verify that that item actually is supposed to go on this order. So if you're not using the handhelds for picking and verifying that you've picked the right product by scanning the barcode with the handheld, you can do it here as well. 
right? Um, you can verify that you're, you're packaging the right items. But in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan a command called pack all that's simply going to package everything that's on that order into that box number seven here. So I've done that, packaged up, and we're ready to go. Next step is I actually want to go out and print my label, my packaging labels. Now, before I do that, let's actually have a quick peek at the sales order on this particular uh, shipment. So when I go in, actually, I could have scrolled down there as well on the, the shipment information. But the idea behind this, nobody on the sales order specified how this thing is supposed to ship. Now, that's not typical, right? By the time it gets to the warehouse, we'll already know based on uh, the customer or based on uh, the sales rep putting a, a shipping agent in here or whatever, we'll typically know how we're going to ship that, that particular um, order. In this case, nobody has specified it, so we have no idea how we're going to ship this particular order in the warehouse. So when I go out and say, okay, get me my shipping label for this particular box, uh, the system is going to be confused. And what it'll do instead is it'll say, hey, I don't know how this thing is supposed to ship. You tell me. Now, again, we typically wouldn't see this in the warehouse, um, but in this case, since we didn't specify it on the sales order, what it does is it gives us a list of all the carriers that we have defined and all the rates for those carriers and delivery dates and everything else. Now, this screen that you see here, we can also see at the quote or the sales order level, where if I'm doing rate shopping for a customer while I'm on a sales order, I can decide how I want that uh, to be uh, uh, shipped. <clears throat> Now, on the warehouse in this particular case, and by the way, for all the carriers that we support with the online API, this is going out with your account number and getting the rate based on your discount structure or whatever you've got with that particular carrier. Um, if you're doing LTL, we can also import all the LTL rates, and you can do rate shopping across LTL as well. Okay, It's just not online. It's, it's uh, uh, static. We do have a lot of online LTL carriers that will be coming online later this year. But, uh, and then it'll work the same way, but you can import rates from carriers we don't support, or if we do support them, you get those online rates. So let's say I, in this case, I'm gonna choose FedEx two day here. And what that will do now is, um, it does actually quite a few things. So step one, it gets me the label. And you can set this up in Business Central so that it doesn't actually show this uh, screen at all. It simply prints that label on the printer beside me right at that very moment. Okay, or I can manually print it. But I've got this showing up so I can do a print preview and show you the label we get back. Now, not rocket science, it's I chose FedEx today and I get the label for FedEx today and away I go. That prints out, I slap it on the package and I'm off to the races. Okay. Now, the other thing it did was when we got that tracking number, we can have it set up to automatically email the customer that their package is being you know, packaged up and it's ready to go. So what happens is I'm just going to start a new tab here, and now I'm going to be Mr. Customer, and I'm going to log into my Gmail account. I'll give it a sec here. And you'll notice we've got a, an email. And that email, this format is yours to control. So you, in Business Central, you define your email format, you know, the replaceable text that you want to use, all that kind of thing. And um, what we've got here, the most important thing, is this tracking link. Because when I click on that, what it does is it takes me to a tracking page. This has your logo on it. This has your advertising, your links, everything else. So you're not sending people to the FedEx site. You're sending them to essentially your site where you can push specials or additional advertising or whatever you want. And that's how you get the marketing guys to pay for your shipping software, because they love this stuff. You've got a captive audience that's coming to check their package and you try and sell them more stuff at the same time. At any rate, the only thing that changes here would be the carrier. So if I'd ship this UPS or whatever, this would change, but the rest of this format stays the same. And it does give me all the same level of detail as if I went to the FedEx site. So if I scroll down, we can see all the uh, events that have occurred with this particular package so far. And up at the top here, we can see the, the timeline and the estimated delivery dates and everything else. So very nice tool for you know, keeping your customers in the loop and, and managing your, your branding and advertising as well at the same time. All right. Now, <clears throat> so that's all done. I've basically packaged this thing up. It's ready to go. If we go back to that, uh, that particular sales order, we can also see a couple other things that it did. 
So the first thing is it added that freight cost onto the order for me. Now you can do a lot of things here. You can set it up so that it automatically, you know, discounts this freight based on the order value or marks up your cost or sets a flat rate or whatever you like. So you can set up all those pricing rules within the system by customer uh, if you want or by carrier and uh, and set it there. So for example, this came in and it set it to $145, but I could have a rule that says, hey, if the order value is greater than a thousand, you know, give this these guys a hundred percent discount on the freight as well. And of course, I put in now that we're shipping at FedEx today with the tracking number. And I can also go in and see all the packages that are shipped with this particular order. So if I had multiple packages, it would list all the packages or pallets that went with this particular order. So a customer phones up and says, hey, I didn't get one of the boxes. I can figure out exactly which box is missing. I can get the specific tracking number for that box and chase FedEx or whoever and sort it out. So anyway, that's the basics of dynamic ship. You can streamline this to the point where I scan a single barcode and everything I did with scanning those three or four barcodes would happen all in one shot. So you can actually make it dirt simple to do and you can actually make it a little more uh, explicit like I could scan individual serial numbers or lot numbers when I'm shipping those types of things. But that gives you, uh, you know, sort of the basics of, of how this thing uh, uh, works. All right. So. Uh, I went a few minutes later than I'd hoped, but I'm all done uh, as far as what I was going to show. Um, Angie, we can uh, open up for, for questions if you like. Thank you, Mark. Yes, we do have a few questions. The first one is, if you set up your inventory with the QR barcode, can it be a single scan when picking material instead of bin PM, I'm sorry, instead of bin PN, lot, and quantity. Yeah, PN would probably be part number. Uh, yes, you can. So if you've got all that information in the, in the data matrix code, um, then you can scan one barcode and, and you're done. We normally don't put the bin code in the barcode, but um, based on the lot number, we know which bin it's in potentially, that sort of thing. So yes, you can have a single scan and it brings all of that information into the system automatically. Okay, okay thank you. And the next question is, can there be a threshold to the price charge to the customer? For example, if the order is over X amount, then there is no freight charge. Yeah, that, that's basically what I showed there where um, you can uh, set a discount. So you can come in and um, uh, <clears throat> set what we call uh, uh, freight pricing rules where you can come in and say, hey, for all customers or a specific customer, um, you know, if I'm if I'm shipping via FedEx or whatever, I can do it by carrier or just global. But let's say FedEx, I got to deal with them. And I say, you know what, if the order value is $1,000, I'm going to mark up the freight by 10%. And uh, I'm going to give a 100% discount, oops, not 1,000%. And I'm going to add the uh, marked up charge. So what this will do is it'll go in and it'll say, okay, I'm going to, the order value is a thousand dollars or more. So I'm going to mark up the freight from FedEx because we chose FedEx here, Let's scroll back. So from FedEx, I'm going to mark up my freight by 10%, but because the order value was over a thousand, I'm also going to give it a hundred percent discount. So what the customer is going to see on the, on the sales order, the invoice is they'll see you know, my, my cost plus 10%, but 100% discount on that. So now they get their invoice, they say, oh, freight would have cost me 100 bucks, but hey, I got 100% discount on it for, for being at the, the right order level. Okay, so those are the, the types of rules you can set up. Here. All right, thank you. And if the user is posting under the Business Central licensing model, is the handheld user treated as a full named user? Yeah, so um, good question. Um, <clears throat> so in Business Central in the cloud version, you would have a, a full user that can log into Business Central and use the handheld with the same license. Now, if, you, if that person using the handheld will never need to go into Business Central and log in, you can, get, uh, you can send them up as a device user. Now, that device license from Business Central is coming out in the next month or so. Uh, but it'll be substantially less than a full user license. So 
That means your, your people in the warehouse using the scan guns, which effectively can do everything you can do within um, Business Central itself, as far as inventory goes, will be a much lower cost than what you would have for a, a full user within Business Central. So you have both options. It's, it's very flexible. All right, thank you. And can there be a custom picking logic defined? For example, is there a way to do pick suggestions based on expiry dates or some other algorithm for low shelf life food products? Yeah, um, so exactly for that specific example, yes, you can set it up so it picks the, uh, the first expired product, um, you know, before it picks the, the, uh, the newer product. Um, as far as other products, you know, uh, the, the pick order that you go in, uh, Business Central has six, roughly six different ways you can generate that pick ticket to send you into the warehouse in different, uh, uh, different pick orders, essentially. But yes, for that specific example, you can pick the oldest product first. All right. Thank you, Mark. It appears that those are all the questions that we have for today. If anyone has any further questions, uh, please feel free to contact the team at InsightWorks or you can contact us here at Anovia with additional questions that you may have. Thank you, Mark, for presenting and to everyone on today's call or if you're watching on demand, thank you for joining us. And we do have a few more webinars coming soon. Tomorrow, March 7th, we have Jeff Pergolsky from Anovia Consulting presenting on Pick the wrong cloud, what now? And we have Chad Williams from Anovia Consulting. He will be presenting on custom business central reporting. And that webinar will be on Wednesday, March 13th. And Focus is coming up in March in Houston, Texas. Focus is a two-day deep dive training event to help you get a deeper understanding of your Microsoft Dynamics NAV Power BI and Business Central systems. To learn more about Focus and to get all the details for this conference, you can visit our conference page on our website, and that's anovia.com slash conferences. If you're interested, please register. And Anovia has their annual customer conference coming up in April in the Wisconsin Dells, April 24th and 25th. Contact your rep or visit our conference page where it will have all the details for our conference. This is a free event to attend and we would love to have you. Register now. Hotel rooms are going fast. All right. Thank you again for joining us and we look forward to seeing you all again soon on another Anovia webinar. Have a great day, everyone.